Rick Roslin Science here. And today it's Friday, and so on Fridays I like to do something that's kind of a little more fun and has a larger audience, a general audience. So today's lesson is for anybody that likes color. And I know my granddaughter, Rowan, my young Texas scientist, she's only four, and she loves art and science. In fact, check out this planet she made. Isn't that cool? She made this planet, and so today we're going to do a little bit of science and a little bit of art, and I'll tell you, I'm no artist, you ought to talk to Rowan, she's an artist, but I do love science, I like to try different things. So, first of all, remember, have your science journal to write down questions and ideas and projects. This journal is for you to keep track of your science, because my motto is, science for everyone, everywhere, even at home. And so today, you know, today though, um, Anybody that's listened to me and been in my classes talking about space, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what I tell them. I don't know how well I can teach you about space. You know, my whole life I've loved learning about space and looking at the stars and looking at the, uh, the moon that goes around the earth and, and learning about the people who landed on the moon and even studying our, our own planet Earth. And I even like learning about solar eclipses and the sun. So, and I love science fiction, so I love learning about space. I remember when I was a kid, 10 years old, in my backyard, sitting with the flashlight, sending a message, R, I, C, K, up into space, knowing that that light, unless it hits something, is traveling 186,000 miles per second, and it's going on and on and on. So... Here are the three reasons why it's really hard to learn about space. Number one, things are really old. So old, I can't even think how old they are. Number two, things are really big. And number three, things are really far away. But we're going to try today to learn a couple of things about that. We're going to do some science and some art. In fact, uh, some of the materials you'll need is maybe a paper plate, very important, some shaving cream, the cheaper the better, not gel, but the cheaper the better, shaving cream, some food coloring, maybe some toothpicks, a ruler, and some scissors. So, some paper, some paper plates, some shaving cream, food color, ruler, and a toothpick. Oh, and also <laughs> some... Uh, paper napkins, because this gets a little messy. All right, so that's what we're going to do. I'll tell you, almost every picture you've seen in a book or on the internet is wrong when they show you the planets, because they have to squeeze them down on a piece of paper or on your television screen. And when you, you, you have a problem, planets are so big and so far away that if you shrink them down together to fit on the paper, they'll be too small to see. So if you draw them big enough to see, then you have to have a paper as big as a football field. So there's our problem. It's called scale. For example, let me show you this. See this uh, a planet that Rowan made? Now, it looks like it's small, but if I get close to you, now it looks like it's really big. And, and see this uh, uh, drawing of the sun? It looks like it's big, but when I put it way over here, if you shut one eye, it looks small. So size and how it looks has to do with how far you are from something and your perspective. But just because uh, things are so big, we can still try to do them in scale. A really cool thing to do if you have, uh, huh, I wouldn't say toilet paper because it's kind of hard to find toilet paper these days, but if you have any adding machine tape, you can make in your house or in your yard a scale of the solar system distance. In science, instead of using a, a ruler or miles to measure how, how far planets are from the sun, we use something called an AU, astronomical unit. An astronomical unit is really how far the Earth is from the sun. And we use that kind of like our solar system uh, ruler or our solar system measure. We call that an AU, an astronomical unit. I know that's fancy stuff, 
but you could uh, make the planets and get uh, online and get a scale, and you could put the sun here and find the inner planets and mark the outer planets. And that's a really cool thing to help you start to understand just how far the planets are. Let me tell you this. Let me give you an idea. The closest thing to the Earth is the moon, and that's about 240,000 miles. And then we're also close to our next planet, Mars. The, spa the fastest spaceship going so fast takes about a year and a half, 18 months to get to Mars. And not only that, let's look at the sun. The sun, and this is a big number, is 92 million miles away from us. And light travels so fast. What that means is, this gets a little technical, what that means is, if the sun, if we put like a, if we could switch off the sun, you can't, but if we could just like switch off the sun, the light traveling so fast would take seven minutes before we'd see darkness. I mean, the sun is so far away from us, I don't even want to tell you how far the other planets are. I tell you, I'm getting a headache thinking about how far things are. Uh, in 1977, we sent Voyager 2, or 2 to explore the grand journey, to see all the planets. They were all coming around, and that was in 1977. It just left our solar system a few years ago. It's amazing how far things are. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. So we're going to try today, we're going to try to make some planets the right size. And I have this little uh, uh, drawing right here. Check it out. And here are the nine planets, or maybe eight. Uh, I, luckily, Pluto is now a planet. And I use this. Here's Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, uh, probably uh, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto is not there. But we can add Pluto. So these are relative sizes. That means uh, look, how, <laughs> look how small Earth would be right there. That's Earth right there. So you can get online and find out different sizes. And so this is some different sizes of planets. And I'll tell you, there's some great videos. A really good video is the scale of the solar system, where a couple of guys went out in the desert, and they used the marble as the Earth. And if we use a marble as the Earth, the sun has to be about six feet. It's from my fingertips to my fingertips. Things are really big. And in our solar system, the sun is the biggest. But that's not what we're going to do today. We're going to make some planets. We're going to have some fun making some planets. So let me uh, come on around and we'll get started, okay? Here we go. I got my journal right here. And uh, let's see. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do something called um, paper marbling. Now, paper marbling happened a long time ago. It was invented in Japan. And it was called suminagashi. Suminagashi, which means floating ink. Where they would float ink on what liquid and then they would put the paper and transfer the ink to it and you see these beautiful patterns now to me that reminds me of jupiter we can see the big red spot actually copernicus saw that spot 400 years ago and we see all these beautiful storms and so i'm going to show you a technique called paper marbling to make some planets now remember <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to help you remember space. It's too big, too far, and too old, but we should still try it. And here is a couple things that I showed you in another lesson. Here's a word, it's hard to say. Hydrophilic. Hydro means water. Philic means dissolves or it likes. So if something's hydrophilic, it dissolves in water. Luckily, the food coloring I'm going to use dissolves in water. So this is hydrophilic. It dissolves in water. And then we're gonna put it on something called hydrophobic, <laughs> shaving cream. Shaving cream is hydrophobic. That means it does not dissolve, it pushes them away. So there's a little bit of background. We're gonna do some paper mar marbling. We're going to, the science is, is that the food coloring dissolves in water, but not in shaving cream. And uh, we're going to have some fun. And I'm going to show you what we can do with this a little bit later. Let me uh, zoom back out and we'll get things going here. So the first thing you need, and remember, this is going to get messy. <laughs> so I like to uh, use a paper plate. I'm going to put my paper. But this is also fun, too. Um, put a paper plate down. Let's see if I can crank this up a little bit higher. Here we go. And 
I'm gonna put, this is the fun part, shake up the shaving cream. Remember, when I, like this morning I shaved, I put water on my face, got my beard nice and wet so I could shave, then I put shaving cream to hold the water in, and then I would shave, and that's what, so here we go. This, this. And this is under pressure so it foams up. You don't need a lot of it. <laughs> okay, well, that looks kind of cool just like that. Now, there's a couple things you can do. First of all, you might want to just um, smooth it out. And so I'm going to use my ruler here. I'm going to just smooth it out just a little bit. This where it gets to be fun and messy. <laughs> so don't do this anywhere near something that might get stained. Your hands are going to get stained. Here comes the fun part. I got my food coloring. So I get I guess the first thing we could do is we can make the sun. And to make the sun, I'm gonna use these two, uh, some yellows, drip, 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 a lot of, uh, you don't need a lot of this. And one of the biggest mistakes is kids, <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, and you just have to experiment on your own. We're gonna stir this here in a minute. The more you stir, you get end up making what I call planet yuck, <laughs> which is okay. Um, but you may uh, want to hold off and not do planet yuck yet. So let's do the sun. So the next step, oh, here we go. I've already, I've already got the start of my food coloring fingers. That's all right. So I'm gonna take a toothpick and I'm just gonna make some small swirls. Not a lot, just a small. Now, a lot of kids just like to go like this. They like make a, and keep swirling and swirling. But in this case, just do a few at first. Now you probably think, well, that doesn't look that great yet well it will <laughs> okay so you see i just did a few of these because you can always go back and do more so right now the food coloring is floating on top of the shaving cream because one is hydrophilic and one is <clears throat> hydrophobic so let's see what happens here we go i'm going to take there's a couple ways to do this i'm going to take a clean sheet of paper and I'm using a little bit of harder paper, but you can use any kind of paper you have. And I'm gonna put this on top here like this, press it down, and this is where it gets real interesting. Lift it up, and now it's transferred onto here. I'm gonna move this off to the side because <clears throat> I'm gonna take another ruler. There's a couple ways to do this. One is just to scrape it on across and see what happens. Watch this, let's see what happens, ready? That is so cool. Look at that. It left, the ink was left on the paper. Just like the Japanese art of suminagashi. Let's try it again. I still have some ink right here. So I can actually, I could leave that one. I might leave that one just like that and get another one. Here we go. Now I'm, I want to try it like this to see what happens. Here's a straight one. Oh, look at that. You could even make cards like this. Scrape it completely off. That's so cool. Let's do one more. And now I've, I haven't even, uh, <laughs> I haven't even, this is what I'm gonna try to do in, in a round motion. What happens if I start going around and round and round? and then scrape it off. I don't know, maybe that's a black hole. That's kind of cool. And look, we still have all of this to do another one with. So you can have a lot of fun with this experiment. And the science behind it is some things dissolve in water, that's hydrophilic, and some don't. Let's put this down this time. And I'm gonna spin this around. This is where I start making a mess. Here we go. I'm gonna spin this one around. See what happens if I spin it. Lift it up and do some spinning. Clean it off, you might like that. Oh, let's put some cool waves in. Here we go, watch, here comes my waves, ready? Here we go, here's my waves. Zigzag, 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 and then scrape it off. So there's some really cool suns and I'm starting to make a mess here, so let me clean this up a little bit with a paper napkin. 
And if you really want it, let's see, we can make this, uh, we can cut this out. Let's see, I like, uh, I kind of like the first one I did. Let's see here, this guy. So I'm gonna cut this out. Here's my, here's my son. Now remember, this is not the scale, because if we had a son this size, we'd have to have a microscope <laughs> to, to see the planets. I kind of like that. Hey, let's, uh, uh, let's take a look. I'll put these over to dry, put that one right over here. This one here, we can make it into a lot of different things. You know what? You could even make this into a uh, a nice card. A nice card. You can uh, use a paper napkin to, to wipe this off. I have some paper napkins or at least a, something cloth. And these dry pretty quick. And you could make this into a card. Fold it in half. Make this into a nice science card or just a nice uh, a card. Earth Day card, maybe. Hey, let's, uh, that's this color here. Let's do another one. This time, let's use uh, some different colors. Let's get some greens and some reds and some blues. Here's some greens. First, add the shaving cream. Okay. This time I'm not going to smooth it all out. This time I'm just going to leave it like that and see what happens. Here's some reds. Drop, drop, drop. Some greens. I need some blues. I don't have some blue anywhere. Gotta have some blues. A lot of greens, a lot of reds, a lot of yellow. Some yellow on it. Kind of looks like Christmas right there. <laughs> And I do have some blue in here. Let me open this blue up. Here's my blue. Make sure you're not wearing clothes that uh, your, your, your best clothes, because if you get food coloring on them, it takes a lot of washing to get it out. All right, here's my toothpick. Little swirls. Swirls and mix, swirls and mix. Now, long swirls are kind of cool too. But too much, too much, you have planet yuck. I, believe me, you'll have planet yuck. Like less is best. But hey, you figure it out. I want color on all the edges. So I'm gonna glob some here and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And there we go, that's kind of cool. Let's see what happens next, ready? You can just take your paper and put it right on here. Move back my food coloring, my scissors, push it down. Give it a chance for that ink to float off of the planet onto here. Take your ruler. And then you wanna scrape off this part right here and see what we have. I'm gonna make some zigzag lines this time. Cool. I'm gonna go back over this one more time like this, ready? I'm getting some cool imagery here. This is a planet with a lot of gas, like Jupiter. Okay, so you can make these planets. I'm gonna do one more, because this is fun. You never know exactly each one of them is going to be just a little bit different, just like every planet is a little bit different. So I got that guy ready to be cut out in different sizes. Try another one here with another piece of paper. And I'm going to show you one more thing I'd like you to do. Spin that on around, see what happens, and pull it off. Oh, look at that. When you pull it off slow, you get really cool designs. Put this guy over here. This is just fun. This makes you feel good to do something like this. Because you never know. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I'm gonna go again. If you don't like to make a planet, you can always make just nice cards or art projects. 
and eventually you have to come to a place where you think you're done. <laughs> I think I'm done. All right, so I got quite a mess here on this table. I want to show you one more thing. Let me move this out of the way. Get my good stuff out of here. And um, remember, you can cut these out into different sizes and make your planets. That's one thing to do, hang them up in your room. A second thing to do is what I like. Let me show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this out of the way and show you a website. If you search the word travel planet posters, <laughs> I know it's a lot, right? Travel planet posters. Let me show you. And I just happen to do that on my laptop here. Let me show you what, what you end up getting. Okay. Here we go. So these... And I apologize for having to show you a picture of a computer, but that's all I can do with the, my setup. Because I do all these lessons with my iPhone. Here, let's take a look at these. These are so cool. So what you can do is, let's say you want to do a poster on Mars. And here we go. Here's Mars. And you can use this art technique, cut out Mars, put it on your paper, go to the website, on NASA, learn about Mars, and make a travel poster to Mars with three facts about it. It's the red planet. It's the closest planet to us. It may have carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. Or maybe you'll do Jupiter. Check out Jupiter here. Maybe you'll do Jupiter, a uh, planet Jupiter with a red spot. It's a gas giant. Or maybe you'll do, uh, maybe there's so many, maybe this is a good one. Remember I told you about the grand tour that, uh, uh, that was done by Voyager. Maybe you'll do a grand tour. So look up vintage space posters to give you some ideas. And some of them are so cool. I, I like, look at this one. I'd love to see you make a planet, a poster to this planet, or even uh, over here to Saturn. And you can put a rocket ship. You can put astronauts there. See beautiful Saturn from the majestic valleys of Titan. <laughs> That'd be so cool. And all you have to do is add some facts about it. And uh, uh, maybe uh, here's Uranus, the one planet that rotates kind of weird, different. Get tilted for the sideways planet. And so have some fun with that. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, lesson here. Let me uh, come back and say uh, goodbye to you on this one. And uh, make yourself some planets. They're so cool. And remember, space is a cool thing to learn about. It's big, it's far, it's old, but you can learn a lot about it by looking up in the sky or reading about it on the internet or making your own projects. Hey, have some fun. And I know some of the students in Wayne Township are talking to their teachers and sending pictures to them. Because your teachers are sending to me. And it's really cool. The science is for everyone, everywhere, even when you're at home. And you can contact me through your teacher. I'm a Wayne Township teacher. Uh, so I hope to see you next week when I have five new activities. Thanks for tuning in. See you later, Rowan. Great, great planets. <laughs>